What's up everybody, Pie Guy back again. And today I kind of wanted to almost do an update to a video I put out when I first started off the channel, which is how to change your, uh, your screen size and your formatting. There's just a few new tips and tricks that I learned, uh, things I get questioned about, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So um, we'll just jump right into it. Uh, keep in mind, all the, most of these retro games were made on like a 4.3 format. So that's why by default they're that they're that small and you put it on a modern day TV and you're like, I have a huge empty space in my screen. Um, technically the games probably do look the best in that format, but realistically you're probably sitting a lot further away from your TV than you were back when these games came out and the big screen was considered like a 30 inch, right? Um, so I'm gonna blow mine up and you know, maybe not stretch it all the way, but I wanna find a good balance and I'll show you guys how I do that. So there are a couple different techniques. Um, First thing that I covered in the last video, I don't really do this anymore, but I will show you guys how to do it. Launch a game. Press the A button very quickly to get into this screen. Um, don't be intimidated if it's your first time here. It's really not a big deal. If you ever access this by accident, you press it by A while the game is launching and it'll take you here. You can just go down to launch and proceed as usual. Um, the default video mode, num uh, it says number four and under that number five on the left hand side. So you can actually set for this emulator, um, which is LR, SNES. Um, you can pick any number of these and this will change your screen format as well. Uh, you have interlaced progressive, you have the different sizes um, of the screen. So you can pick whatever you want there. Um, and it'll save that way for either the emulator. And if you go back, so you can see select default video mode for emulator. And if you go down here, select video mode for the emulator plus the ROM. You can change it just for a specific game if you want to. Um, I don't really do this anymore because I, I just find it to be a lot more tedious and it's a lot of going back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the title and show you guys how I have my games formatted. So what you want to do is bring up your RetroArch menu. So press select and X, and it'll take it right up. Now, first thing we have to do, if this is your first time using RetroArch, is turn it on to save um, games on exit, to save your configuration on exit, rather. So go ahead and hit escape, or uh, rather your B button. I'm using my keyboard, and I assigned B to escape. Um, and you want to go down to settings, configuration, and make sure this option is changed to on, save, con uh, save configuration on exit. Um, just press left and right and that'll toggle it. Uh, so make sure it's on. So I'll hit the B button to go back and hop up to video. So by default, I'll show you what it comes in. Core provided. So I'm in, uh, I believe I'm in Nintendo right now. So. I'm going to actually jump out of this RetroArch menu so you can get a look at the game. I guess this is Super Nintendo actually. But you can see that just again how small it is. Again, it's going to look probably at sharpest in this format. But realistically, if you got a 40 something inch TV or whatever, modern TV, you're probably going to want bigger. So. Let me go back into RetroArch and go into settings and video. I like to put all of my games at 1610. You could go 169, but the game is going to look very stretched. Um, you, I'll even hop out so you can take a look at it here. It just looks a little odd to me. Um, it's just <laughs> like widescreen old school game. It looks weird. Uh, so let's hop back in. I like to do 16.9. I find that to be the best balance. But the nice thing is, as you scroll through, it changes it immediately. So you can very quickly get a glimpse at what you're dealing with. Alright, so 16.10, that is my go-to. And I'll go back into the game so you can get a look at it. I feel like it just doesn't really look stretched. You're filling out a lot more of your screen. There, to me, there are still a few black bars on the on the sides. It's not a big deal to me. 
because uh, I feel like the game itself doesn't feel weird. Um, so that's what I like to do. Now to get this to save, once you figure out what screen setting you want, um, again we turned on the option save configuration on exit and then you go down to save core override. And you'll get a confirmation on the bottom left. Now this will save for every game that uses the same exact emulator. If you have a game using a different emulator, you just have to do it again. You saw how simple it is. So you have to do this for your Genesis, you know, PlayStation, whatever it is you're using. Um, you just have to do this real quick. Save core overrides. It'll save that way for every single title. Um, so it's very simple to do, quick and easy, I think. And you immediately get to see the result. Whereas if you do the launching method, you have to get into the game, decide if you like it or not, start select, hop back out, reset it, go into the menu. It's, you know, it's just a little tedious. Um, so that's that. Now the other question I get is, uh, how come I still have borders on the tops and bottoms of my screen, the, the horizontal borders, not the vertical ones? So what that is, it's actually a setting within Raspberry Pi itself. It's not an actual RetroArch setting. So I'm gonna hop out and we're going to hop into Raspberry Pi or your settings, depending on which theme you're using. Retro Pi. All right, and this is actually a RasPi config setting. Now, mine is already optimized to the correct setting, so I don't want to do this again to mine because I'll have to reboot and I'll lose the video feed, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I'll get right up to the point so you guys can follow along. So what you want to do is go down to option number seven. This is advanced options. And then A2 is overscan. If you have an older script, I believe this was like A1, but the main thing is look for the keyword overscan. Um, and what overscan is, is it's, it's really mostly in computer monitors and some televisions have it. It, it basically just like kind of takes that out automatically. Um, that that black frame you have, which you get in these back menus, um, but it won't be there in ES. Um, so it says, would you like to enable uh, compensation or compensation for displays with overscan? Um, you want to select no if you have the black bars or if you if you don't have a an, uh, display device with that setting available for overscan. So change it to no. Um, and then you get a confirmation right there. Press OK. And what you want to do here is press right and select finish. Now, you guys, I want you to do a reboot now. I don't want to do that because I'll lose my video and the recording will stop and it's just way more work and editing for me to do. Uh, but I want you guys to go ahead and reboot. And once you reboot, it should be correct. I noticed sometimes for me, it got a little finicky and I had to do it two times, but it works. And it's a very simple thing to do. So I'm going to press no because I don't want to actually reboot. And there you have it. That you should be able to see it right here um, in Emulation Station that you have no bars around the the outer portions of your screen. Uh, like I said, if for some reason it didn't work for you, just do it again. Sometimes you just have to. I, I have no idea why. Uh, but hopefully you guys found this helpful. I appreciate you guys watching. If you liked it, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Um, also click that subscribe button for me. I do have some good upcoming videos on the way out and wouldn't want you guys to miss it. If you guys are looking for Raspberry Pi or any kind of gear, go ahead and check the links below. Um, they are links to Amazon where I buy my own supplies and from what I can find it are the best prices. Um, and if you purchase through those links, it does not cost you an extra dime, but it does help me out and help me fund the channel. So appreciate you guys. Thanks for the support. Have a good one.